We're here with a very special guest who is about to introduce himself. Yep, my name is Arthur Atkinson. Uh, I come from Lancaster in the north of England, but during the war I was stationed here at Skellingthorpe and I flew in Lancaster aircraft for 34 times over Germany and France and was very, very lucky not to be hurt while I was doing that. What was it like being on all those planes flying? It was, it was all right because I was a very young man then, of course. I wasn't 95, which I am now. I was 21. <laughs> it's quite a difference. But uh, I like being at Skellingthorpe. I lived in a Nissen hut at the side of Doddington Road. Uh, and in the Nissen hut, there were two Lancaster bomber crews, one crew each side of the hut. And strangely enough, quite recently, I met a gentleman who was living in the same hut with me in 1944, a name called Ken Johnson, and he was also on my squadron, which was number 61 squadron. Can you tell me a little, about, little bit about your role in the aircraft? Yes, I was a wireless operator and reserve air gunner. When I say reserve air gunner, that means that if any of the other gunners got hurt while we were over Germany, then I would leave my radio set and take over their guns in their gun turret. But fortunately for me, that never happened. And I spent most of my time operating the radio. And the, the reason I was there was to keep in contact with our base in England. And every half hour, I would get a broadcast over the radio, which gave me any message that was due for us and if there was no message they would give me a number and I would write that number in my logbook to show that I had listened for messages every half hour and the sort of messages I would get for example would be um, on the way back there's heavy fog at Skellingthorpe and therefore you are diverted to Waddington or some other place in England. In fact, on one occasion, I received a message to say that we were diverted to Scotland, which was quite a long way to go when we just spent hours flying over Germany. But nevertheless, that was my main task. In fact, I got a message at one time, we were bombing um, Philips Radio Works at Eindhoven in Holland, and I received a message to say, do not bomb, return to base which was very serious because we were carrying a full load of bombs and we were now told we were not going to drop them and we had to drop them in the sea on the way back because we couldn't land the aircraft with a full load of bombs in case we blew ourselves up. So it, my job was important in keeping in touch with base for any messages for the pilot of the aircraft. Were you quite scared or were you very confident and brave? Everybody was scared. But you don't let that bother you. When you get in the aircraft, you do the job that you've been trained to do, whether you're scared or not. Because if you don't, the aircraft wouldn't go anywhere. But um, there we are. We all did the job we were supposed to do. Tell me how the planes communicated with the air base. Yes. Uh, normally the pilot did that using his radio telephone. Uh, and he would speak into a microphone uh, using the call sign of the aircraft. Now the call sign of the aircraft at Skellingthorpe on 61 Squadron was Spot Nose. And the aircraft that we flew in was T for Tommy, but in those days we called it T Tear, T-A-R-E. So he would normally say uh, hello, Black Swan, which was the call sign of the air base. Hello, Black Swan, this is Spotnose Tear talking. How are we for landing? And then the base station, Black Swan, would say, Circle Airfield at 2,000 feet, because there were other aircraft waiting to land as well. 
and we were all stacked up over the airfield at 500 feet intervals. And then as each aircraft landed, the, air the next aircraft would be called down. I see you've got medals on your, and badges. What, what are they for? Well, the badge is a squadron crest of 61 Squadron. That is the Lincoln Imp, because we were known as the Lincoln Squadron. But the medals, the first one is the 39, 49, 45 star, and the strip across it says Bomber Command, to show that I served with Bomber Command. The second medal is the Aircrew Europe star, and the strip across that one says France and Germany. This shows that I qualified for the France and Germany star as well, but you're not allowed to wear both medals. So one medal, Aircrew Europe, strip across France and Germany. Shows that you earned the two medals. The next medal is the Defence Medal, which showed that I served most of my time in the United Kingdom and not abroad. And the last medal is the General, the War Medal, sorry, the next to the last medal is the War Medal which most people wear. The final medal is the French Legion of Honour, which was awarded because I took part in the D-Day operations on the 6th of June 1944, and this was awarded to all people who did that by the French government. So there, there you've got the lot. <laughs>